In this video, I'm doing a step-by-step -step tutorial of this lovely poppy. The materials we're working with are polychromos colored pencils. I've included the list for you here. Finesse blending marker, white ink from Doc PH Martin, and I'm working on Stonehenge paper. This is the image template that we'll be working from, and it's available in my December newsletter. In the description box below is the link. I'll use the color names and not the numbers when I'm drawing, but you can refer back to the color list for numbers if you need. I'm starting the drawing by outlining the stamen in black. I'm also building up some of the details of the stamens by adding values. And I'm going to go ahead and do outlining and shading of the central pistol in black as well. I'm adding the warm gray to continue to build up values around the tops of the stamens. At the same time, I'm adding in some purple violet and I keep building more of the values with a mix of black, gray, and purple. This adds visual interest and keeps the flower from looking too dull. I continue to work on the stamens as this is a big part of the drawing and I want to make sure that I can illustrate these areas in good detail. I make sure that my pencil is kept super sharp and I'm using my MNR sharpener from o Mobius and Rupert to do that. These small fine details are often a challenge with color pencil as they require a constant sharp pencil. Once I've done a good amount of the tops of the stamens, I'm adding the May Green in a base layer, very, very light over the center of the poppy on the pistol. I'm using a scribble lay down technique to do this. It's a great way to actually get color pencil down on paper in a smooth and quick way. After I've completed more of the tops of the stamens, I'm using the dark red and going in between the stamens to start to add the back color of the poppy petals. Take your time on this. Overall, this drawing took me about five hours to draw and much of the time was spent on doing the center area, going around all the stamens and really trying hard to define the area from the back of the petals to the stamens was a challenge. I mix the gray with the dark red to create an effect of light hitting the poppy petal in the area behind the stamens. Many poppies will have a black area along the inside bottom of the petal, and this is often quite highly reflective. To capture the sense of this, you need to create a reflective look. This is done easily by just lightening up the black to a gray and mix it with the petal color. I keep working with the black to outline more and start to pull the color along the outside of the poppy petals. More and more layering of the black around the stamen, putting in the little stamen stems and then building up a layer of black very lightly over the petals is what I'm working on now. I never start by pressing too hard with my pencils. The key that I have found to success with an amazing colored pencil drawing is actually doing light layers of colors and not super hard or dark right at the beginning. You're basically blocking in and then as you add more layers of colors, you get richer and more depth in the colors it creates. It's just wonderful. And while we're the time and effort to do in your drawing. I'm starting to pull some of the black up along the petals and at the same time I'm coming in with the scarlet red and applying a base layer over parts of the petals. Then I'm jumping in with light magenta and adding a base layer over those parts as well. I want to make sure the petals look red but a bit of orange is going to actually help with some visual interest. Adding a variety of colors allows me to play a bit with highlights and lowlights, again creating depth and visual interest. I keep building up my colors and here I'm adding the rose carmine on top of the light magenta which I've applied over most of the petals of the poppy. Again, I'm not going too heavy or dark, I'm keeping my layers really light at this moment. And I'm using a more linear line application of the color. I continue to work with the rose carmine, adding some values and building up some linear effects along the way. After I added the base layer of the rose carmine, I'm going to start working on each petal and build up the colors more. This is where the fun of creating a more three-dimensional image comes into the picture. Adding darker values, I'm using the red violet and applying it along the top edge of the petals and then pulling it down along the bottom edge of the petal that's in front of it. This is a great way to show overlap of one part of the subject over another. As I work with the red violet, I'm going to start mixing in an orange red color with the deep scarlet red. I'm trying to build up the shadows and at the same time create a linear effect to mimic the petals form and texture. Using a contour line helps a lot with this and it's a great way to introduce a more curved effect in the subject. Each section of the poppy will be approached in about the same way. As I move in closer to the center of the poppy, there's a lot more black that gets pulled into the top of the petals as the color moves further out from the center. 
I'm using the black to help with that and then jump into using the red violet to keep blending the darks of the black with the color of the poppy and the red of the upper parts of the petals. At this point in the drying, I'm going to be adding a layer of alizarin scarlet and matter red to keep the visual interest on the layers and build up of color into a wonderful multi-red effect. You want to keep building your layers of colors and make sure that you're doing it slowly, very lightly, so that the colors can be applied on top of other layers. It's at this point that I'm going to start using a solvent to help blend the colors more, make them a bit darker and more solid looking. I only add a solvent when I have at least three or more layers and I'm happy with the way that the drawing is going as applying solvent pushes the pigment into the paper and makes it very difficult to erase. For this petal, I'm approaching it the same way as the other ones, starting with pulling the black up from the bottom, using the red violet to do edging and shading along the top edge, and applying it to help blend the black into the petal. Then, I'm going to add alizarin scarlet, add a red, and mixing it all together on top with a rose carmine. You can use a colored pencil for blending, and I find that a slightly lighter color does a wonderful job of this. I'm now going to build up more three-dimensional elements of the petals. To do this, I'm using dark red to help create the effects of ups and downs of the petal, as if it's turned. I'm also making sure that those bumps are directly related to the top of the petal, the ups and downs of the edge. I'll make sure that the petal is darker when the top of the petal goes down, and keep it lighter on the petal areas when it goes up. For this petal that I'm working on right now, I want to go in with a deep red first as I want to make this petal quite dark on this side of the drawing. I'm adding some black as in the other petals and came in with a deep red on top of that. I'm using the red violet to edge the top and blend that color into the deep red and black to create a deeper color effect. You'll notice that I'm using a lot of contour lines. Again, contour lines follow the shape of the subject and I'm using them to create the texture effect for the petals. I'm using the red violet for this and making it look like there's ups and downs by layering on darker colors in certain areas and keeping it lighter for when the petal comes up. I keep working between the deep red and the red violet to blend and work the colors together. To create visual interest, I'm using the deep red to do some edging also. This gives the impression that light is hitting the subject in different ways, so don't stick to one edging color all the time. Mix it up for visual change. I'm also making sure that I'm using a lot of black with the shading. This is going to really help to make it look more three-dimensional. At this point, I'm mixing in alizarin, crimson, and deep red to blend the colors together. One of the colors I haven't used at this point is a light cadmium red. This is a very orange color and I decided that I wanted to use it to create highlights. A good tip for working with color is anytime you have a lot of cool tone colors, in this case we have a lot of reds and purples, use a warm color to contrast and counter the cool tones. The warm orange color will also give the appearance of light hitting your subject or passing through your subject as in this case with the thin petals. On this next petal, I'm using a lot of black and red violet. This petal is supposed to look like it's really in deep shadow. I want to emphasize this and using the dark colors for shading will help. I'm also applying layers of dark red and deep scarlet red, keeping all the colors on the darker side to emphasize shadow and shading. Keep using a lot of contour lines to really emphasize the shape of that leaf and the texture in it. I'll apply the marker solvent pen at this point and mix the colors together and then jump back into finishing the color on this petal with the red violet. On to the next petal. This one, I'm starting with light cadmium red over the surface. This is to give the impression that this petal is catching more light. I also add some of the light cadmium red to the tip of the petal I just completed and parts of the petal above that. Again, it's all about light on the subject and creating the illusion of depth and dimension. I'm using matter on top of the cadmium and blending it together. The darker color will help create form and emphasize the shape of the petal, which needs to go much darker. On the top of this, I'm adding black again Again, to emphasize the curve of the petal going underneath the flower. I'm also using a contour line to help to create that emphasis on the curve and the structure of the flower. On this petal, I'm starting with the black using a contour line. The black is used in the center of the flower and all the way out to the edges. With the other petals, it's all done to create a shape with the petal and shadowing. 
I'm adding in the red violet and blend it in with the black and also use the red violet along the outside edge of the petal. I'll blend that downwards towards the black as well, making sure that it doesn't look like it's a line, but an edge and has shadow and colors. Once I've done this, I'll use lots of contouring for layering the colors down and blend, blend, and more blend. I'm applying the matter red in this area and I'm going to continue to blend with the rest of the colors, just like the other petals. Again, the whole idea is to use a lot of contouring and a lot of blending them together to make sure that you're creating a good mix of color on top of each other. I've switched pencils over to the deep red and I'm continuing to do the same thing that I did with the rest of the drawing. I'm blending some more and layering colors on top of each other. I've switched over to the rose carmine now. You can see that I'm going all over the area because I'm just trying to blend the colors in and adding a little bit to the areas on the top part of that petal. And I'm finalizing the application of color with a deep red and just blending the colors together just to smooth them out. I'm applying the colorless blender from Prismacolor over the colors right now, just smoothing it down and blending the colors together. And you can see that I'm doing a fairly large sweep of the application of the blender pencil. This is going to really, really help to push that color into the paper and make it a lot nicer and richer. To work on the center of the poppy, I'm going to build up the green with some May green and permanent green olive. I don't need to add a lot of color as I want it to stay quite light, but I'm also adding some purple violet over the tops of the stamens to add more interest and visual harmony. I'm also trying to build the impression of the stamen tops with a little line down the middle and some shading outwards. At this point what I'm doing is coming in with a very small paintbrush and some white ink and I'm applying some highlights. I'm putting it over the stamens and I'm going to be doing it along the edges of some of the petals and add some highlights on the petals themselves, which I'll then blend in with a little bit of colored pencil again. Again, this is to create emphasis and to create some visual interest. Finally, I'll use some rose carmine to blend in the highlights a little bit better. For the leaf on the right and the stem on the bottom, I'm applying a layer of pine green. I'm not really looking for emphasis on this part of the drawing, so I'm keeping it very simple. I'm using a scribble technique which is very easy to blend together. After this, I'm adding a very light layer of ultramarine blue as I want the leaf and stem to have a slight blue tinge to them. On the left leaf, I'm applying Prussian blue down first as I want this side to look even more blue. After this, I'll layer in some pine green and finalize with an edge of green throughout. Thanks so much everyone for joining me and happy drawing.